we turn now to a new book um, which warns that voting and American democracy itself may be in jeopardy. It's called What You Need to Know About Voting and Why. In it, author Kim Whaley explains how misinformation, voter suppression, foreign interference, and outdated technology have influenced and even stopped people from voting. She's a law professor at the University of Baltimore. Good morning, Kim. Thanks for being with us. Um, you actually say that, the, that voting and American democracy together could be in jeopardy here. Well, we've seen many of the traditional guardrails of democracy fall. And when I say that, uh, you know, the Constitution is like a job description or a contract. It's just a piece of paper if it's not enforced in the breach. That is, if norms or laws are broken, if people in office are doing things and there's no consequences, then the rules no longer exist. So at the end of the day, with really a dysfunctional Congress right now that's so polarized, voting is on the ballot as really a check on the existence of democracy itself. People, if they go to the ballot box in November, need to take do so to take back their democracy as government by we the people, or myself and other constitutional scholars worry that we'll slip into something that's not democracy, that looks more like something uh, approaching authoritarianism. And, and we've seen democracies fail even in our own lifetime. Uh, so this is not entirely hyperbole in this moment. We're about to vote in a, a presidential election in the middle of a pandemic. Are we prepared for it, do you think? Well, you know, we have a patchwork of 50 states and then sub-entities that manage voting. So no, we're not prepared. Uh, the states are, are flailing financially. There hasn't been the tax revenue that's necessary. And now states are moving, I think, in a good way towards mail-in voting so people can vote safely and don't have to choose between their personal health or their right to vote. But that takes money, that takes coordination. You have to order the ballots in multiple languages. Um, and uh, people need to register now or request their mail-in ballots now. It's kind of like RSVPing for a party so that the states know, you know, how much food to tell the caterer to order. I mean, that's really important. And then, of course, there will be uh, polls open on that day, uh, but there'll be fewer polls, fewer poll workers, longer lines. We saw it in Georgia. We saw problems in Wisconsin. So uh, I think we have to yeah. expect that not every vote is going to be timely counted. We've had, I mean, you mentioned you mentioned the long lines. We had record turnout in Georgia, I think in Iowa as well, but at the same time, registration uh, appears to be down in, in, in some places. What, what do you see going on there? Well, registration is down. It was up in January and February over 2016, but when COVID hit in March, it plummeted because under federal law, you register at the DMV and the DMV is closed. And you, there are also obviously um, election sites where you can register officially, uh, social services agencies, and also a, lot, a huge get out the vote efforts for registration at large public gatherings. None of that is happening. Uh, what we saw in Wisconsin, as I indicated, is people really do want to vote. Uh, but when they sign up late, later, closer to the election date, what, there was a tsunami of applications and just not the resources to catch up. So again, earlier is better. Um, and as I've written recently in a piece in The Bulwark, uh, apathy and cynicism around voting is one of the biggest objections to voting. And so I, I encourage people to grab a friend or two who's not used to voting and get them out because there's really nothing more important in this moment. Whatever your issue is that you care about, yeah. immigration reform, climate change, all right. it all hinges on a functioning democracy. All right. The book is What You Need to Know About Voting and Why. Kim Whaley, thank you so much for being with us.